Good evening. The regular meeting of the Southern Shores Town Council for June the 2nd, 2015 is now in session. I remind you if you wish to speak at the public comment period tonight that you sign up. I also remind you if you wish to speak during the public hearing portion that you sign up for, to speak at that time. The same rules will apply as always. You'll have three minutes to speak, uh, say what you want to say, and you will, should not expect an answer from anyone at council at that time. We will. Council reserves the option of always answering a question during their time according to the meeting when they speak. Thank you. If you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Council, I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion's made and carried. The uh, consent agenda tonight consists of two items. I'd like to have a motion to approve the consent agenda, if I may. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion's made and carried. A special, uh, special privilege for us tonight to have our Coast, our Coast Guard, our Lifeguard Service with us. <laughs> I got to make a couple of mistakes every evening, guys. <laughs> Have our lifeguard service with us, and um, I'd like to ask the uh, Merrick now if he would like to come up and introduce our, our lifeguards for the year. How you doing? Thank you. Um, what you see is about a third of our total staff. We're just kind of spread out. There are a lot of people off. If the first row would stand up, and I'll introduce them. Um, Hammond. Geis is first, and he's and he's graduated from uh, South Carolina. Uh, Carmen Turner graduated from UVA and is now working on her master's at UVA, JMU. Still undecided. Still undecided. What? Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> she taught English in Peru. Yes, I do know that. Uh, Jason, rookie. Just graduated from Virginia Tech, chemical engineering. Uh, Jeremy Powell um, is at Salisbury University. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know what he's studying. What is it? Computer science. Computer science. Dave Becquet, I don't know what school he's at this year. <laughs> he keeps, no, he's at Delaware. He keeps changing. If you guys would sit down, next group stand up. <laughs> That's only the third school, right? It's only the thir third time's a charm, that's right. Uh, VMI grad, uh, Jake Kelleher, and he's going, to, he's going in in the fall. And uh, where are you going, do you know, Fort? Fort Lauderdale, Missouri. Did you hear that? I didn't. Um, Bill Malugin is in paramedic school, right? Uh, Kevin Hall just graduated from uh, JMU in physics. Um, Devin Boyle is studying religion and Spanish, right? Okay, and she's at JMU. Thor? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jake. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll just call him Jake. <laughs> Jake, uh, what was the name of that school? Lynchburg College. Yeah, Lynchburg College and is studying uh, exercise science. Uh, as you can see, he's exercising quite a bit. <laughs> Next row. Walker Ross, just graduated from some private school in the mountains. That's a high school. You want to tell him what school was it? Uh, St. Andrew Swanee School. It's the boarding school near University of the South. Um, <clears throat> and Ty Coulter is in an art school in uh, Savannah, what's the name of it? Uh, 
Savannah College of the Arts. Jordan's at Jordan uh, Nowacek is at uh, VCU, and she's going to be studying medicine of sorts. You guys can sit down. I don't know what to tell you about these guys. Tommy Kent is actually only with us for a short while, and then he's going to do a, what are you doing? You're teaching English in Japan? China. China. I'm sorry, he's teaching English in China. Um, I don't know where this guy came from, the old guy. <laughs> Jim Massacar, uh, he graduated a long time ago from Tennessee and swam at Tennessee. Um, and we're very fortunate to have him now. He's my, he's my go-to handyman guy, but he still can turn a quick 500 time. Jimmy Helms is a police officer in Kitty Hawk. And he is kind of my right hand, and Jim's my left hand. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. Sure. Any questions for me? No, I just have one comment. I always look forward to this meeting because it feels so really good. It makes me, us old folks, feel better looking at these young folks and what they're doing. They're great. Yeah. And it's also a good test for you, I noticed. <laughs> Remembering all those names and information. Uh, a week ago, I couldn't have told you half their names. It was really, it was really tough. And I didn't have that many new people. The rookie class was only about 10. Um, I just was having a difficult time. And I was a teacher, so I... It's a senior moment. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I've told, I've told Merrick this in the past on more than one occasion. We're very, 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 very fortunate to have people of his caliber who bring the kind of people on board they do for our beach, uh, beach protection, people's protection on the beach. It really is, means a lot to see them here and to see what they do during the course of each season. And we're, as I said, very fortunate. General public comment at this time. No one signed up for general public comment. Right. You want you want to you want to step. All right. Just introduce yourself, and you're welcome to speak, Tommy. Tom, Tommy Carroll, 77 East Dogwood Trail. It was brought to my attention on the on the northeast and south Dogwood corner. They have six to eight basins for stormwater. It was brought to my attention that those basins might be the incorrect basins for that, for that corner. And I understand it might be an easy fix, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. A, a basin is basically a box, okay, a grade on top at ground level, water goes into the top of the basin, and there's an, an exit pipe that drains into a dry area. Okay, in a, situa in a situation where you have water that has to go into a holding pond or it has to go into a canal, worst case scenario, you have in the, in the bottom of that basin area what they call a sump. And that catches the sediment before it goes into that holding water, okay? On a, on a corner like ours, it should have been without sump, so now that exit pipe is about, in some cases, I think about 11 inches above low grade. So it's holding 11 inches of water. So the design from engineering, engineering standards that that water should evaporate within two to three days because of the, because of the hatching of the mosquitoes, the eggs turns the larvae in on, on the third or fourth day. So, uh, so now there are six of those basins at least that are, have carried water and do not evaporate. So what we have there is a serious breeding ground for mosquitoes. Now it was pointed out to me, and um, it was pointed out to me that re really the, the, 
the fix to that would be to fill the bottom of those basins with concrete so you get up get up to where that exit where pipe is where the dis where the discharge pipe is uh, but it, it's holding a lot of water up at least you know even that two week period of no rain the one out in front of my house you know seven to eight inches still so I wanted to bring that to the attention to the town and uh, I think you know we we don't need the mosquitoes there and they're, it, they're all holding it all right thank you thank you Tommy Town Planner, Mr. Haskett. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. <clears throat> I have a brief report for you tonight for uh, the month of May. Um, for permitting, there were nine zoning permits issued, 28 building permits issued, which consisted of one repair, one repair addition, one remodel addition, two additions, three accessory structures, and 20 others. There are currently 12 single family dwellings under construction in the town, and the total amount of fees collected in May was $4,800.40. Any questions? Any questions, Council? Thank you, Wes. Thank you. Chief Cole. Good evening. Good evening. Um, just for the record, I've asked Merrick to assign Jake, a.k.a. Thor, to the town of Southern Shores Beaches. <laughs> we'll have no problems this summer. <laughs> he is one big fella. Uh, the report for the month of May 2015, as you can see up above, um, just some of the breakdowns. We, uh, we had uh, 25 incidents. Two of those were burglaries, uh, five larcenies two fraud, we had one vandalism. The uh, CSA is uh, criminal sale, uh, drug violations. We had four of those. We had one driving while intoxicated, one disorderly conduct. Uh, we had two court violations. And under the all others, um, five of those were uh, domestic related. Under arrest, we uh, had one arrest for a larceny, one fraud, one for embezzlement. And uh, the criminal sale, we had the arrest for that, as well as the DWI and disorderly conduct, and then the two court violations uh, for a total of 11 arrests for the month of May. Uh, I'm happy to report we've had zero accidents in the month of May, um, but I got a bad feeling we're going to make up for that real quick. And then for citations, uh, the officers conducted 123 traffic stops, and out of that, uh, they issued uh, 60 written citations, and another 62 warning citations. And then our ordinance violations, um, now that we have uh, our community resource officer assigned and scheduled, uh, we had 19 of those. One was a dog at large, uh, three noise complaints, one uh, or 10 no permit for parking, and then we had one that was parking in a non-parking area, and then four that were in the right of way. Uh, as you can see, a breakdown of the call for services, we had 960 for the month. Uh, that's pretty close about what we had the same time last year. Uh, again, 115 of those were extra patrols, 123 traffic stops. We responded 19 alarm calls, 29 suspicious condition calls. We had 42 traffic direct, most of those were at the school. And we had requests from other agencies uh, for backup for mutual aid 18 times. Conducted 227 business checks and 94 <coughs> residence checks. Any questions? Business checks, is that about normal? Uh, yeah, that's, that's about right, yeah. What they do is, you know, I expect the officers to get out and they rattle the doors and, uh, and check all the businesses. And I know you're probably, at least Mr. Lahan is, is wondering, we have contacted the federal investigator from the Postal Service and he advises us that the paperwork has been submitted and it is supposed to go uh, before a federal grand jury by the end of July. So, so uh, they, they're, they're from last Christmas on to July. That is correct. It's the federal government. 
and they move at the speed of light. But once, uh, once that goes before the jury and, and uh, if they find probable cause, then we'll be able to, to file the federal charges and then let you know more information. Thank you. Those of you not familiar with that particular situation, we had a, uh, last, last Christmas, we had a situation where people were taking mail from people, people's mailboxes and they apprehended them, but it, was a, it's, it is a federal offense, so we have to wait and see how that plays out. Any old business counsel that anybody would like to discuss? I apologize, Ed. Ed Limbacher, our fire chief. I got ahead of myself. That's two tonight. <laughs> One more. One more. I'm out of here, right? Good evening, everybody. Uh, just a kind of a brief report. I do want to do something else uh, after I read the monthly report, but um, 50 calls for the month of May. As you can see, summer is fastly approaching us, so we're up from our normal call year of 30 to 35, so we're up to 50 this month for the month of May. Uh, breaks down pretty simply like this. Eight, which were a couple of structure fires. They were mulch fires, unauthorized burn, authorized burn, stuff like that. Um, 31 rescue or EMS assists. One hazardous condition, no fire. One, three service calls, two good intent calls, and five false alarms. Um, and for a total of 50 for last month. Does anybody have any questions regarding this, this report here? It's pretty simple. It's just... Uh, Numbers are climbing, summer's upon us. So, uh, as most of you know, Councilman Sanders is a lifetime member of the fire department. So he has access to all the emails that I send out to my crew. And it was brought to my attention. He thought it might be a good idea for me to share a little bit. As most of us know, you get busy doing your own little slice of life and you figure everybody knows what you know, but um, just a little education thing. There's much more that goes on, obviously, than just sitting around answering 50 fire calls a month. I mean, if that was it, it would be pretty easy for me, but. Uh, unfortunately, it's not that easy. So he wanted me to share this email with you, and I'll just be brief if I can. But um, on Saturday, 516, we, just to show a little bit of what goes on, uh, we had four, four firefighters and two of our rehab people with our rehab truck in a training burn in Lower Currituck. All on this same day, we had three additional firefighters in Firefighter 1 and 2 school in Lower Currituck at their fire department doing a hazmat class. We had five people at the station in the morning for maintenance two people at training at the station for doing rescue jack, which is a specific tool for cribbing cars and things like that. We had also during that six people we had solved for a heart attack on Duckwood Drive. So you can see right there the amount of people, all different activities, and it really, with the exception of the heart attack, had nothing to do with actually answering fire calls where people would actually see us. So there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, I thought it was interesting that day that we had a fire alarm later on in the evening at seven, I think it was like five o'clock at Duckwoods Country Club. And we had myself and one, two, four with a full crew on it, on scene in under five minutes, which for us is a very good response time. But the thing I thought was really interesting was with everything going on that day, and I mean, I don't know, most of you don't understand how taxing it is to be in these trainings because it's hot and you got your gear on and sweaty. We had a total of 14 people with all three trucks throw up for just a fire alarm activation. Not, I'm not belittling the fire alarm, I'm just saying something you think that we answer all the time, but they still felt it was important enough to get back out, come back to the station and do what they needed to do. So just something to share with you. And you know, I'm not gonna do it every month, but I just thought it was interesting when Councilor Sam and Sanders brought it up to me that, hey, you know, I don't know if these people all know exactly what goes on behind the scenes. Maybe you wanna share a little bit of information. So uh, does anyone have any questions or? No, that's very helpful, thank you. All right. You yes, do sir. have an open session training thing. It, was it once a month, or how often do you do uh, we that? We have it four times a month, every Tuesday at okay. uh, 7 o'clock. So the public should be, those of you who don't know that, but you, at Tuesday at 7 o'clock, they have an open session where you can mm -hmm. go and actually watch them train or participate in the training if you'd right. like, if you're interested. All of this stuff was in addition to our normal Tuesday training. This was right. all extra stuff that people did. So, right. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Now let's ask about old business. No. Nope. Thank you. <clears throat> this evening we'll have a public hearing on, um, on our fiscal year 2015-2016 proposed budget and consideration of, of budget ordinance number 2015-06001.
Um, I'm going to call on the town manager this time to make his presentation of, of the budget ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, as you know, I filed the proposed budget with you on May the 5th. And tonight, after a month, I will, uh, give you a, I'll give a brief synopsis. And of course, after public hearing and your deliberations, the finance officer and I are here to answer any questions you may have at that time as well. Um, again, it, it gave me a pleasure to uh, uh, report to you a month ago that we have been able to develop a budget that called for no tax increase and no proposed uh, uh, appropriation from, from um, undesignated fund balance in order to balance this budget of 6,692,258 this year. Um, I will go over a couple of the highlights of some of the departments and also some of uh, we've received some written comments on a couple of lines and I'll comment on those as well. Uh, under revenues, as you see on the, on the uh, summary sheet, Avalorm taxes and Southern Shores make up 44% of our revenue. The other mm -hmm. revenues, of course, are derived from the various others, including land transfer, occupancy tax, uh, and sales tax. Um, the total revenues is shown there on the eighth line down of 6.692258 million. Under expenditures, the expenditures are broken out into various departments. As you know, when we develop the budget, we develop it at the staff level by line. And tonight, when you consider a budget or when you consider adopting a budget, it will be by department in your budget ordinance. But I will go down and comment on each individual department, and give some highlights as I did uh, during the workshop and also previously. The first uh, is the administration department shown there in a highlight. Um, one of the highlights that I'll go over is, is the line for training in the amount of $10,000. Um, the town clerk, as you know, we have added new positions or, or, or rearranged some positions within the administrative department. Uh, before I begin, and also, as you know, a lot of times the administration department lines cover all our employees, and I'll designate those when I get there. The town clerk will be attending a uh, four-week clerk certification course this year. Um, she'll also be attending annual continuing ed class at the Master's Clerk Academy. Both of those are in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, with the School of Government. Um, our town administrator, Cynthia Mills, will be attending the School of Government for a four-day contracts and purchasing course and training. And she'll also be attending the three-day New Clerks Academy as well for training as a deputy clerk. And both, that will be at Chapel Hill as well. Our finance officer, as is typical for each year, um, she attends the North Carolina Government Finance Officers Association annual training conference. That'll be in Craven County this year. And she'll also attend the public law and employment update, which will be at the School of Government in Chapel Hill. The finance officer also attends the municipal personnel officers organization uh, fall training. That'll be in Brunswick County this year. And she also attends the annual finance seminar, which will be in Craven County this year. As town manager, I, I attend the public employment law update, which is at the School of Government in Chapel Hill. Uh, also, two of the Town and City Managers Association conference trainings. Also, the North Carolina City and County Managers Association training, and also emergency management update training each year, which is out of, out of town. The council has opportunities during the year. Some of you uh, availed yourself of them last year. As you know, we're members of the um, North Carolina Inland and Waterways Association. Um, that conference is held each year. I believe this year it will be further south in New Hanover County. And the North Carolina Coastal Local Government Annual Training Session will also be available to council as well. Also, the uh, ethics training required by the state, any new council members, will be authored by the Ethics Commission as well. So those are the projected um, expenses for that line. And of course, other training opportunities do pop up during the year that we avail ourselves of, of, of to keep staff uh, trained and at the top. The second item I was going to comment to you about is the wellness initiative. As you know, we discussed that in the, in the workshop. The wellness initiative um, was, was begin, begun about 
several years back, even before I came on board as town manager, and it's been in your budget for that many years. It is a, um, a means of assisting our town employees with fitness goals. It is also a component that's considered by our health insurance carrier each year um, for premium uh, determination. We have uh, successfully experienced um, fitness programs for the employees, and also it's a subsidy for that, and also um, other fitness programs that inhale, enhance the whole town employee base. So that initiative is for all employees, and it basically is put in the administration department for uh, basically ease of administration. Um, the other item I was going to comment on is the technology update for the Pitt Center, as we discussed in the workshop. That is a grant item. Um, there's $22,000 there. As you recall, we did discuss um, some, possibly discussing some updates in the Pitt Center um, during the year. One of them was the webcasting software that was mentioned during the retreat. Um, we Price that, as you recall, and it's currently around $15,000. I did not actually put that in the budget, but I put that as an item for us to discuss during the year as things come up for the Pitt Center. As you recall, during the year, the council always, in the last two or three years, has come up with items for enhancement of this room and for the audiovisual. That money is a grant program from the county. It is a 50% match, so there is some expense on the top of the $22,000. Do not propose it, or do not have an idea that we would spend anywhere near that this year, but that's in there because it is grant funds available, and we can still talk about the, uh, the webcasting item that was discussed at the, uh, the retreat during the year as we get through with the room. The other is a proposed vehicle. Um, for the administration department, and as we discussed in the retreat, the current vehicle that we, the administration uses for traveling out of town is a vehicle that the code enforcement um, department uses as well. We share that. Um, that vehicle is 10 years old. Um, is, we're proposing a vehicle to be used for out of town trips and also for uh, the day-to-day -day items that the administrative staff uses when they do work out of the uh, town hall complex. Um, basically, it is a means to, uh, for policy reasons, to require travel using a town car unless it's not available. It saves the town 57 cents a mile uh, for employees who do travel on the training trips, et cetera, and from meetings. So that is the purpose of, of um, proposing to you a, a vehicle for of uh, the town hall basically put in the admin department budget. And, and that, I believe that's acquired on a state, on a state contract. That is to be acquired with a state contract, yes, sir. Um, the, next, the next item is the code enforcement department. You can see that the code enforcement uh, department is, is projected at 300,572. Um, the big item there is the town code update, which we have talked about, I think, I know since I've been here for five years, um, each year. And we had talked about this again at the retreat and also at the, uh, at the workshop. Again, the town code, as the planner has commented and uh, as I've commented several times, um, there are sections that overlap and contradict uh, throughout the town code and this includes the zoning chapters as well. Um, we've conferred over the years with the School of Government, with the League of Municipalities, with other town planners, with other town attorneys, and we've discussed it each year, and each year I have basically committed to the town planner that we would try to put this in the budget, and we were finally able to do that this year. We priced this uh, based on interviewing other towns of like size, who are going through the same thing. And it is a liberal price because we don't know yet what, what it is we're going to get until we actually put it out for bid as we discussed at the retreat and as we discussed uh, at the workshop. Um, NAG's head is going through putting out for bid for a, um, a, a unified development ordinance. So we will be able to get some idea of that price in there. Obviously, if we have savings in this line, which I certainly anticipate we will, that'll revert back into the general fund. 
So uh, we still would propose to you a town code rewrite. This is more than just a reorganization of sections that went on, I think, about seven years ago as we researched in the minutes. This is, this is an actual rewrite of language and a modernization of the town code. The next item uh, is the police department, and I'll just give a general statement about the police department budget. Um, there, are, there is new personnel in the police department. Um, uh, the lines that have changed are affected because of the fact that we do have personnel. And of course, travel, um, training, uniforms, and vehicle maintenance, repair, and operations are all affected by the fact that we have three officers that have filled positions that we were previously unfilled, including the school resource officer. So that's just a general synopsis of the police department and why you see um, a general increase there. The next item or department is the streets, bridges, and canals. Um, as you know, you, we are proposing um, to you the amount revenue neutral of three cents from the old uh, valuation, and that is $516,000 for capital street repair in the town of Southern Shores. That is in there, the 516. Also what's in this line item, which makes it a large line item, is the complete, the complete, the start and completion of the town, town's um, tall pine bridge. That's still projected to begin October 1. Again, most of that is covered, 80% of that is covered by a federal grant, which is reflected in the revenues. So that is a large item that makes the expense line go up, but again, 80% of that is covered by a, a federal grant. Also new in this particular apartment, as you recall, we discussed that the uh, workshop <coughs> is a proposal for bulkhead maintenance and repair. That's a line item for uh, maintenance of town-owned bulkheads throughout the town. Um, the, there are several areas that need attention, and obviously there's tree growth pushing the canal bulkhead out in a lot of locations. So that's why we propose that you adopt a specific amount in that particular departmental budget this year. <coughs> the next item is the Public Works Department. Um, Basically, the actual department is the same. I will comment to you on one item since we got a written comment on the training for that particular department, um, just an idea of what training would be entailed. And this is, these are the ones that we propose at the beginning of the year. And as you know, during the year, a lot of training comes up um, for our public works employees that we avail ourselves for. Um, but this is so far is planned. Um, they, two of the guys will attend a stormwater utility and awareness training. The director will attend the public works annual director's training. Everybody in the department will attend the annual pesticides training and certification. Um, the, the supervisor will attend the supervisor's leadership training in Chapel Hill. Um, everybody will attend the preventive maintenance certification and training. Everybody will attend irrigation system certification and training, and all of them will attend the OSHA training. And the director will attend the local government purchasing and contract school in Chapel Hill at the School of Government. So those are, those are just what's planned out of that line at this time. And of course, it was priced accordingly. That's just a question. Yes, sir. I don't know. I'm not sure which, which class that is. That's, that's the one that they have, that, that is the mandatory class that's is the one they take. I think 10 hours, at least on the general industry side. The next, next line is the sanitation services. And as you recall, that is by contract. Um, we were able to get all the pricing ahead of time this year. Um, Thanks to the finance officer, we didn't have any a situation where we had something come, that was going to come in after the fact, after adoption. So that is all by contract and by fees that were set ahead of time this year for both trash collection and landfill tipping fee and the recycling. And you'll also notice the lemon branch removal contract is within that department as well. 
The next is the fire services, and that is my contract with the Southern Shores Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated. And that amount, of course, is regulated by the contract. This is the first year that a uh, appropriation for the 800 megahertz radios does not occur in the budget. So that has been paid out. And the last item under the, um, under the expenditures would be Ocean Rescue. Tonight you got introduced, of course, to about a third of, of Ocean Rescue staff. Um, they have increased their size. They're still able to provide the same service to the town of Southern Shores. Um, he has taken on a National Park Service contract this year, and that's the reason that they have increased in size. Uh, last year was a trial basis he had with the NPS on Hatteras Island and Ocracoke, and this year he's locked in, so his uh, operation has increased greatly. But I'm happy to say that our service has remained the same, if not better, and we're in operation right now. That, that is a synopsis of the general fund. Mr. Mayor, um, again, um, it is a balanced budget as required by law. It is set uh, with no tax rate increase, and of course our current tax rate is 22 cents per 100 evaluation. That remains the same under this proposed budget. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate that. It's now time for public comment on the, on the budget um, hearing. And the first person to speak, I think, is Mr. Van Giesen. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I want to thank the town manager for answering so many of the questions that I submitted in writing last week. Um, very solid, comprehensive response to almost uh, all of my concerns. But I do have a few additional ones, particularly uh, regarding the uh, changes to the, co to the town code. Um, I understand that now that this has been a kind of a long-standing um, objective and is a follow-on to previous efforts uh, from several years ago. Uh, many of the questions that I posed on this relate to providing specific examples, and I understand maybe it won't be appropriate in this setting to do that, but at some point before we uh, go out for bid for the code uh, changes, I'd like to have the town see what it is that we, we think we need to change, examples of the kinds of things that need improvement, if there could, would be a way to provide that kind of transparency so that we understand what we can expect to see coming in, in the future when the changes are affected. Um, and then two other points. Uh, during the capital improvement project, oh, my timer's not going, by the way, is there not a time? Not that I want to give up time. But, um, Thank you. I just thought I couldn't take advantage of it for too long. You're getting your frequent flyer miles here this year. Right. Um, during the Capital Improvement Project Committee meeting that I think was back in April, um, and subsequently I think in the letter that you sent to the town council uh, presenting the proposed budget, the town manager uh, talked about uh, estimates or developing an estimate for uh, a planning and surveying and a public hearing re regarding a comprehensive plan for dogwood, the dogwoods. I think it covers all three of the dogwood trails. And my, my question is, I don't believe that's going to be affected during the current budget year. It's going to be in 24, 2015 and 16, uh, or maybe it will start now. But my question is, where does that where are those costs going to be reflected in the budget? And I don't think they were anticipated for the current year. So where would the allocation come from if we do have to use some, some funding from this year? That's a question that you may want to address. I'd love to hear the answer to that. Um, and then similarly, <clears throat> with regard to the Skyline, number seven Skyline purchase or potential purchase, because I don't believe that there's actually been one made. I don't even know if the town's made a, a bid on the property, but if the town is contemplating a bid or is, has made a bid, um, my question is, Where's the money coming from? What, it wasn't in the, the current budget year. I don't see a line item for it in the next budget year. So where would that allocation come from? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I have one more point. Why are we buying that property? What is the purpose for it? What are we going to use it for? 
What's the need? I'd love to hear that answer. Thank you. Mr. Darling? I'm sorry. You're passing. Thank you. May I take Actually, no, you can't. You can take your own three minutes, though. <laughs> and by the way, uh, I heard you on the on the uh, emergency radio circuit this morning, Andrew. Good job. <laughs> and uh, and Schwarzma. Good evening, everyone. Um, I live at 69 Hickory Trail. I'm not really going to address line items so much as the overall budget. And um, I, I have a lot of concern about this budget. Um, we are a, a town of about 3,000 people. We're about four square miles in area. And we have a budget of nearly $7 million, which is comparable to what Kitty Hawk has. And Kitty Hawk has twice the population and twice the area as well as a fire department and a lot of problems on their ocean front and on their beach road. Um, I think we have a grandiose view of ourselves if this is our budget. Um, and I, I'm concerned about a number of things in particular, that we have salaries, that we have expenses for employees that are over $2 million. If you take the salaries plus retirement, I'd like to know what those are. Are we giving pensions to people for their lifetimes? Um, training, travel, FICA, unemployment, health insurance, none of these things are detailed in the town manager's report, but they certainly should be so that we know what these items on the budget represent. Um, the bud but he also mentions that we have a 45% or 45% of the operating budget is set aside in a reserve. Well, that's about $3 million that's just sitting in a reserve. Why? Why is that money there and is it earning any money? If you want it, why not just give us a reduction in our tax rate instead of uh, increasing it as was done it three times in the past five years. The town manager mentions that it hasn't been increased since 13, but it was increased from nine to 10 and from 2011 to 12 and from 2012 to 13. We've had three tax rate increases in the past five years and we have $3 million sitting in a cash reserve. I don't understand it, other than some grandiose notion of, um, of playing with money. Um, and the same seems true with this expansion uh, into Skyline Drive. Are we now looking to grow in a direction that we're not telling people about? Is that what this town is doing? Um, I feel like there's a lack of accountability. I don't feel like the public interest is being taken into account. I also did a little research today and discovered that uh, Mr. Rasco, within the first five days of his employment, increased the budget $3 million. In, from 2009 to 2010, Charlie Reed submitted a budget that was $3,409,150. Mayor Denny then asked Mr. Rasco to prepare a budget. He submitted one that was $6,404,650. In one year, we went up $3 million. At the same time, our reserve fund, was, which was only $441,800 then, is now $3 million. Something's rotten in this budget. Thank you, Ann. Uh, that closes the uh, public comment as far as the um, budget hearing is concerned. Council is in discussion uh, before, we, before I ask you for, for a motion. If not, I would, I would uh, ask uh, council to um, consider the adoption or for motion to consider the adoption of, of budget ordinance number 2015-0601. So moved. 
We have, an, we have a motion to, 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 uh, to accept the proposed budget. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Any issues? All in favor of accepting the, uh, the ordinance as proposed? Aye. 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 Motion's made and carried. Um, Next item of business consideration of approval of a proposed, proposed legal service contract. Council just need a motion to approve the proposed legal services contract for the next, I think it works to, to a three year contract for us. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion's made and carried. Um, Consideration and adoption of an Albemarle Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan under tab four. Need a motion to accept that, Council? To adopt that, I'm sorry. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Consideration of amendment to Council's rules of procedure for calling emergency meetings, um, which is tab five. Uh, we're changing the time here to make it more realistic. If it's an emergency meeting, I'm giving ourselves six hours or a day to call a meeting to order. It's accelerating the process a little bit. Motion to uh, approve that. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll take a moment here and thank those of you who spoke this evening um, with regard to the, uh, to the budget. I appreciate your comments. And I can assure you that we'll, there would be efforts made to get back to you and answer the questions you ask. Council committee reports. Uh, Mayor Hess, you, the, planning, the planning committee meeting. Yes, we had the uh, planning committee meeting on May the 11th. Uh, and we discussed four items. And the purpose of this planning committee, of course, is to explore ideas that may come up before the council so that we say, do we present them to the council or should we move ahead with it as a council? The, uh, anything that's decided is still approved by the council. Um, the first item that came up is a Martins Point citizen suggested that we separate, give them a separate commercial zone for commercial properties in the ETJ zone. And basically the discussion on that really uh, ended up boiling around the fact that there is pending legislation in, uh, in connection with the status of ETJ. So we're not making any recommendations till we find out what the state ends up doing and then we'll take a look at it again if the citizens still want us to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we did a review one more time, the, the discussion that we had at our committee, our council meeting with regards to the um, vegetation, um, um, ordinance and we had no further recommendations to make to the council on that subject. The third item that came up was a suggest consideration by a citizen that suggested that the town of Southern Shores amended zoning code to allow uh, hen chickens as pets. And that committee at this point recommends no <coughs> action by the council. Uh, the next item that came up is actually covered in um, I don't know if you have a separate listing here for it, no. What it was, if you remember at the May 5th meeting, the uh, planning board mentioned to us that there's four people leaving the planning board, so we have to fill them. And so we had a brief discussion about that from the standpoint that there's four people, two of which wish to continue on the planning board. So what we want to recommend to the council here is that we reappoint the two folks that are interested, and I'll give you their names in a second, and then let the staff go through and try to find the proper volunteers. So we really have a list of volunteers, which we don't have right now, to fill the other two positions. So what we're, the committee is recommending to the council is that we reappoint Sam Williams and then appoint the alternate, David Neal, to backfill uh, Mike Flores' a seat because Mike does not wish to uh, continue after this year. Um, so I guess I would put that out to you as a motion um, for, the, for us to consider. Do you have a second? No second. Any discussion? No. All in favor of doing the, of appointing uh, Sam Williams and, and uh, David Neal. David Neal. Aye. The planning board. Aye. 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 Motion's made and carried. There was one last other thing that we did discuss. We, we did discuss again the safety concerns and all the discussions that go around on the solution for South Dogwood Trail. How, how do we handle this? 
And we discussed ways and means really of trying to find out what the citizens really feel because we also know from experience that there's many people on both sides of the street, if you will. So what we ended up doing was to ask, a, we suggested working with the mayor, he started the communication by his letter that went out in the last, last newsletter to start getting feedback from the citizens, what do they feel like it, and so we can get an idea of where at least initially some of the citizens feel the subject, and then we can move on from there to make other steps or make other further plans in the process. So that was pretty much the coverage of the subjects that we discussed at the meeting. Thank you, Julie. Any questions? David, Public Safety Committee meeting. Yes, the uh, Public Safety Committee met May 18th and covered four basic topics. Um, and that committee is made up of the, uh, the fire chief, the police chief, myself, the town manager, Rachel, and Wes. I believe I don't believe I left anybody out. Oh, the director, right? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Didn't miss that one. Uh, and Myrick from Surf Rescue. At any rate, uh, the bulk of the meeting at first was basically the discussion and, and Myrick giving us a briefing on the preparations for the season, uh, their staffing, uh, the, the placement of uh, their lifeguard stands and such. Um, and uh, then the second discussion, um, it's, it, it indicates here in the, in the agenda, review of current adopted official street map. Um, and what the discussion there was primarily, and by the way, there was no council rec recommendations for council on the first topic. Um, these are recommendations that have come from citizens at some point. Um, but in the street map uh, discussion, we're taking a look at the location and necessity of current stop signs, whether they're needed, whether they're required, or uh, whether they can be done away with in certain areas. Um, and of course, that would have to come back to council, I believe, for adoption of the official street map. Um, there were a couple of suggestions from citizens uh, regarding designating the lanes on some of our streets, either by um, using the uh, little reflectors in indicating the center, center line or by actual uh, painting of center lines. Um, those discussions went around and around. There were no recommendations for council out of that, uh, but there was a considerable amount of discussion over the fact that for the, there's no standard for just using the reflectors to designate anything on the street. Uh, those are supposed to be used in coordination with street lines or center lines. And the fact that the standard for center lines is based on a thoroughfare. And we have several streets here that people have made the recommendation we should put those lines or reflectors on, but I don't think we want to indicate that those streets are thoroughfares. Um, also, the width of the, some of the streets at 18 feet doesn't match the standard for, for actual uh, placement of center lines. Um, then there was a considerable discussion of the town parking sticker system. Um, and staff recommends that the, the council, um, and, and we agreed in that committee meeting, that uh, instead of using the stickers, they're going to go to a plastic hanger that uh, indicator, sort of like the, the uh, uh, you know, just it hangs on, the, yeah, like the handicapped uh, card that hangs on your uh, visor, or rather on your uh, rear view mirror. Um, the cost is about the same, and uh, that those would be uh initially given free for to for to a property and um but then replacement would have to require a fee 
and I believe that was considered under our uh, it was under our consent agenda. In the consent agenda. Okay. Uh, further discussion. The third topic was the fire department location uh, and strategic planning for the future. Uh, there was no uh, no recommendations for the council, uh, and it's a sort of an ongoing, continuing uh, discussion there. Um, Topic number four was safety concerns and possible solutions for South Dogwood Trail. Uh, basically, co the committee decided to continue evaluation, study is long range planning, and uh, no council recommendation. Thank you, David. Any questions for <coughs> Mr. Sanders? Comment on that lining or determining the center line of the roads. Every year, there's one resident normally brings that up. But what drives it is they'll go by and they see Red Bay Lane with the lane lines on it. And that's what prompts the conversation. And that was discussed, and that is the only yeah, side know, street in town that has one person. Well, and I, I can't well. remember why that was done. Um, well, that, that street has a whole lot of history, anyhow, Joe. It's yeah. definitely not a thoroughfare. <laughs> no, but at one point in time, it was assumed the SSCA had owned that was responsible for it. Yes. And then it was determined, Jody, you did some work when I was involved, you and I were in the right. association thing, that it actually belonged to the town. To the town. And once all that got transferred, then the street got fixed. Yep. That was that was uh, something that Jody got straight. But, but that's <laughs> yeah. But that's what prompts the conversation. Good. Now it's maybe we need to figure out some way to remove Right for, for a number of years and through several councils, people from that area came asking to have their road improved, and they were always told, well, that doesn't belong to the town. Yes, I Until know. Oh, yeah. We went down that road together. Then, then Jody came back to council and reported, actually, it does belong to the town, and we're responsible. And we um, fixed it. So I, I'm just, my comment is what mm -hmm. the, this, this issue comes up every year by normally by one. Well, the, fact, the facts are pretty, pretty clear on that as far as what we can do and yeah. we can't do, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And street width is a, is a real driver for this. Narrower streets are, are especially if they aren't, as, as David said, thoroughfares, not recommended to be lined in any way. If they are, it's a double line. You haven't got room for it on a 16-foot street or even an 18-foot street. 20, foot, 20 feet, I think, is the minimum width for, a, for lining with double lines. And the other th thing we have meet some sort of a criteria is, is traffic volume per day. And we don't satisfy that 3,000 vehicles a day year round any, on very, any of our streets except possibly dogwood in the summertime. So it's, it's really, there's no, it'd be hard to justify that, the expense of doing that. A, a suggestion might be that somewhere we make that information available to the, to the residents. Everybody, not yeah. everybody knows that. Yeah. There's no, there's no question with the, with the, um, the width of our streets and the fact that a lot of the vehicles today have higher headlights than some of the some of the older vehicles, so the sedans, the, the SUVs are definitely a problem for people, especially if they if their eyesight's a little bit like mine, where they have a hard time in the evening. <coughs> any other any other comments about David? No, that's all I have. Uh, town manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, I wanted to start out my report tonight by announcing to you that tonight marks my fifth anniversary here at the Town of Southern Shores. Um, I came here and started with this council on a Monday morning in June, and the council adopted a budget the very next night that was drafted by the interim town manager at that time. Um, the year started out um, with the challenge that we had to make cuts and unfortunately, although I did not draft that budget, I had a hand in reducing that budget during the year by unfortunate task of having to reduce and force Town of Southern Shores employees that year, as you, some of you may recall. Since that time, I've, I've stressed professionalism among your staff, um, and I think that has worked out well. That was the plan all along five years ago. 
that we did um, engage a professional staff to perform the services for the citizens here. And I, I stand by what we have done over the last five years. Um, I wanted to announce to you, as I did by uh, last week individually, we have closed, the town has closed on the acquisition of the house and lot at Southern Skyline Drive, or Skyline Road, as you directed at your May 5th and May 6th meetings. Uh, the offer was made, the offer was accepted as you directed, and we closed on it last week. Um, the property, of course, um, uh, it was talked about in, what, the th three meetings now, and there are no plans for the property other than to incorporate it into the complex of Town Hall. Um, the house stands there, there is a tenant. Uh, we're meeting with the tenant this week to see how long she wants to stay in the house. Um, we're going to do a short-term, month-to-month lease with the current tenant, if that's what she would like to do to, to honor that tenancy for now. But, of course, the plan is to just consider that as a part of the town hall complex. Um, and as you recall, it was paid for out of this year's budget, which you amended in open meeting, and which you, uh, by that amendment, drew money in from the undesignated fund balance to increase this year's budget to pay for it. So it comes out of this year's budget, not next year's. Um, the work on the rebuild of Pintail Court will begin next week. That is the other Capitol Street project that council authorized uh, for this year. Uh, it is scheduled to be completed within 60 days, so we're looking at the first week of August for that to be completed. Um, Council's consideration of the possible uh, Capitol Street projects for the upcoming fiscal year, as you recall, will be, uh, has been agendized for the July 7th meeting at 5.30. Um, that's for you to consider and direct staff as to which Capitol Street projects you would like performed next year based on the budget that you just adopted. And of course, you've authorized a public hearing for that, and that will be noticed as well to the public. Happy to report to you that the seasonal traffic initiatives as recommended by DOT and also by the uh, joint local government study group that, we, um, that was initiated by Currituck County, those initiatives are in place. They have been, I think, thoroughly vetted in the press and everybody's anticipating to see what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. Um, Chief Johnson with Kitty Hawk is the spokesman for the initiative of uh, a law enforcement officer uh, at the intersection, and the press has um, contacted him several times to give comment on that, and of course, I don't think the real traffic is here yet. So, um, but I will, I do assure you that all those items that, that we came up with in follow-up to DOT's recommendations are in place now. We'll just have to wait and see what happens during the summer. Um, as discussed before, the town of Southern Shores will be this year's sponsor of the Outer Banks uh, National Running Day, and that is tomorrow. If any of y'all would like to come out and help us celebrate, uh, the gun time is 6 a.m., and we'll be gathering at 5.30 at the marketplace tomorrow morning, and that will be over in probably about 50 minutes. That's the report for tonight. I'll be glad to try to answer any questions that any of you may have. This is just a comment. Yeah. Is there a possibility, you know, they've got up above where the Kirtuck County there where the, it tells you to get in the left lane. Is if you're going some, southern shores and yeah, Corral, yeah, good. And there might ought to be a, another reminder, one a little further down the road. <clears throat> they talked about putting one just as you approach the bridge. The one yeah. that you see there now is pretty far north. Yeah, you're right. I was uh, coming home, I might have been that Friday from Memorial Day. They didn't start thinking about it until they got to about the Right. And then, then there was a little bit of a shuffle. That, that would be a suggestion. I'll check, I'll check on that. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that. I mean, that was, the DOT had discussed uh, having one further north and also one as you, as you get closer to the bridge. Yeah, we'll put the second one in place. <coughs> if you've seen those signs, they're pretty elaborate. They're pretty um, <laughs> pretty expensive, I'm sure, to put up. But they did, they did commit to doing that. They're portable, so you know, they'll, right. they'll be there. And Thank you, Peter. One question for you. What was the final, what was our final agreed to price on that property? 
205,000. I thought that was around. Yes. I, I thought it was around that. Didn't you know, I, me, I meant to report that. But that's that's, uh, that's all right. Remember, just, we uh, you authorized the council authorized an offer of two hundred thousand, and then accept. Um, then we did a counter, and it, it settled at two hundred five, as was reported in the May six meeting. And we have gone to closing on that property. It has closed. We, we have gone to closing. Yes, sir. Yeah, I thought so. Thank you. Our, our name's on the title. I guess. Yeah. It has been recorded. I don't have anything to report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of items. I, you mentioned uh, DOT's commitment to the signage. I, I happened to go back up to Hampton on, on Sunday for a gymnastics meet, and on the way back, noticed that the time to travel signs were up north of Sligo and further north. And um, I couldn't judge where they were right. I'd make a couple stops, like Grandy Greenhouse, but I think they are accurate. 40, 39 minutes was travel time to, to Kitty Hawk. So they are in place and they are working. I'm sure they'll see those times change as, as the summer traffic hits us. The other, the other thing I wanted to address was, <clears throat> just briefly, I uh, had good response to my letter of, of two weeks ago in the, in the, in the, news, in the, in the town broadcast. Um, I thought, excellent response, I thought, because I had over a dozen people who have contacted me by email or and a few more verbally. Um, the majority of which, and I think I'm, I haven't done all the final tally, but I'm trying to go through and read each, each, email, each email carefully and respond to the ones I could, but the final tally I had was around 75%, 70 75% of people that, that responded were in favor of some sort of a, a pedestrian walkway on Dogwood Trail, both south and east if possible. Uh, there was recognition that it'd be, it would be some impact to people's property. The, the letters I got were, were I, I thought, not only well crafted, but well thought out. Good, good and reasonable, uh, reasonable responses. Um, all, all but one response was actually very helpful to me and my thinking because they, nobody wanted to see Dogwood, no, there were two people who wanted to see Dogwood Trail widened with an accompanying bike path or pedestrian path, but everybody else wanted to see the separate trail, separate walk path on Dogwood and not do too much with the street, maybe a, a, a very moderate, moderate or modest widening to allow to reduce the, show, the uh, edge failure a little bit and give people a little more room to get out of each other's way. But overall, the response has been very positive. I thought, I was frankly a little surprised I didn't get more people saying, just don't do anything, but that's, that's the response I've gotten so far. Go ahead. It's fine, you can hear. It's just not, this is not to be a conversation. So far. Uh, nine people were, were in favor of a, I didn't say I had a majority of the residents. I said good response. Typically, one of my email letters, I get two or three responses back to you, Anne. So I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good showing. I've had other, since that time, other phone calls and other correspondence from the, from the residents saying the same thing, though, uh, supporting it. Well, no, no, we weren't doing a formal survey. That's all I can say about it. It was strictly informal. It was strictly a, just, a, just an inquiry. I, as I said, I, I'm very encouraged by the fact that I had that many responses, and, and, and they were as, as, as positive as they were, and most of them were very well thought out. Sorry that troubles you. I'm sorry I missed that. It's irrational. Oh, it, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not going to address that comment. Um, anyone else have anything to say tonight? Uh, Jody, your turn. No, I don't have anything more. Uh, Larry? Nothing. That, that was the only thing I um, would encourage that if you've got a problem, we have the town communicates with various vehicles uh, with the residents. And if something is not where it should be or gets moved to a different folder, uh, please call the town staff and they'll help you out and find you where it may be because sometimes documents will move from one folder to another and uh, so don't agonize over it just call and get an answer about it. Uh, the other thing uh, uh, I attended the uh, David McAuliffe uh, reading and book signing over uh, his book on uh, Wright Brothers. Uh, if you 
had to, you missed a great program, um, but that is going to be made into a, uh, a movie. Tom Hanks will be the producer for it. So we'll probably one of these days see some movie people floating around here in the area. David? Nothing. At this time, uh, I'm going to uh, call for us to go into closed session pursuant to NCGS 143-318.11a, section one, to consider proposed draft minutes from previous closed sessions, which are privileged or confidential pursuant to NCGS 143-318.10e. I'll recess for, t for five minutes. Thank you. Hey, Peter, Peter, hold the door open. Yeah. Council, we need a motion to go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11a. 
Section 1, to consider proposed draft minutes from previous closed session, which are privileged or, or confidential pursuant to NCGS 143-318.10E. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're now in closed session.
need a blinky light at the back that he can do Morse code. Morse code to tell you that he's a he's on or not. I have something to read to you guys after we finish all this stuff. Gotcha. We've got volume. All right. Before I ask for a motion to adjourn. I have a question for Peter as well. Okay. Before I ask for a motion, I want to read. You want to ask him the question first? Yes. Uh, Peter, before we adjourn, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Um, uh, Tom and I were in your office uh, some time back discussing the possibility of having the monitors project the face of the, of the uh, people that are speaking so that people in the audience wouldn't be seeing the backside of the person addressing the, and, and have the monitors so that they could actually see the what, what that camera sees. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yes. so yeah. they can see it on yes. the screen. Yes, we, yes. we did get. Um, can we modify? I mean, did we get a? It's the work in progress. Okay, yes. I just just just, mm -hmm. just wanted to know if we made yeah. any progress in doing that. Yeah, he came back and Okay, thank you. It may be one of those things we have to get that line out of money for. Earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that we plan to save and buy a new car with? <laughs> for the mayor? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, That's all I had, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to ask you that question. But thank you. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Being, Aye. Meetings adjourned. If not, you're going to be